All right, guys, welcome back. On this episode, we're gonna get to show you a little bit on this uh, new gearbox that we've installed in this Honda S2000. So this gearbox is a Quaif. They're, it's their 6.9G. Uh, it's their heavy duty trans. This thing takes, I, I know guys have ran it like on thousand horsepower and, and been fine. We're running it on 200. So <laughs> definitely not pushing this trans to the edge, but uh, hopefully that allows us to run this thing for 24 hours straight. So this gearbox does have a built-in oil pump, which will have an oil cooler plumbed in, keeping temps uh, stable. And uh, it's missing a shift lever. So this trans is air shift operated. So it's got a, its own little air compressor, a uh, little air tank, and then two solenoids that controls the shift, um, the air that goes then to the, um, the little air valve on the shifter. So there's two ports, one for an upshift, one for a downshift, um, so that it gets its air supply through the solenoids, which are controlled um, through the computer, uh, and that controls the shift. So the way the computer controls this trans, so the driver will request a gear change, whether it be up or down, that goes into the ECU, and the ECU determines if it's uh, an okay shift. You know, For example, if the driver wants to downshift, but that would mean the next um, next gear puts the engine at a super high rev limit, let's say 10,000 RPM, it's going to reject that shift. It's not going to let it happen. Um, it also has the ability to what they call stack shifts. So if the driver requests three downshifts really quickly, it's not going to just downshift all three gears right away, uh, which obviously is going to throw the engine at a really high RPM. It's, it's going to stack those downshifts. So it'll downshift when it knows the engine is at a safeable uh, a, a safe rev. Um, so it'll it'll downshift automatically those three times when it can. Um, and I think there's a there's an expiration on it. So if it's, you know, let's say you ask for a downshift, but you never actually slow down enough for it to get inside that safe rev limit, um, it has an expiration. So after five seconds or two seconds, it that downshift request expires. So yeah, and uh, the other thing that ECU gets to do is, um, it's controlled, uh, all of this, all of these shifts, up and down shifts are controlled in what they call a closed loop operation. So uh, this gearbox has a barrel position sensor. So it knows when it's in which gear. So let's say on an upshift, you're going from third to fourth, you flick the paddle, you request that upshift, the trans um, will then reduce power uh, because with dog engagement gears, you have to actually have a, some sort of torque reduction there for it to release the gear and engage the next. So the ECU is going to automatically re um, reduce power. And then as soon as it knows, because it's got a barrel position sensor, as soon as it sees it in the next gear, it will then reapply power. So some shifts take a little longer than others. It all depends on uh, the, the situation. You know, if it's, you know, under, if you're maybe not under full load, uh, maybe under a partial decel, whatever, whatever the case, um, every shift takes a little bit different uh, amount of time. So just doing uh, like a time-based shift cut, which is how most, you know, sequentials or dog boxes were kind of uh, very uh, basic way of, of getting them to function. It would just be time-based. So, you know, 70 millisecond shift cut. The problem with that is maybe it, it, it's not in gear by 70 milliseconds and then the power comes back on. And, and if it's maybe 20% of the way engaged, it'll, it can shear the dog uh, gears or, or chip the dog gears. Um, on the other side, let's say the shift is done in 30 milliseconds and there's now a shift cut for 70. What that can do is cause a lot of shock, you know, basically an, an, an impact. Um, it's doing what your impact gun does on the gears. So if it's too long of a shift cut, it'll it'll let everything wind up and then all of a sudden here comes, you know, all 200 horsepower uh, and it slams the gears and sends a bunch of shock, um, drivetrain shock through the, through the driveline. Uh, this trans will probably take that, but we're also running a stock S2000 diff, uh, which are not strong. Those things are notorious. I mean, they break at stock power level. So we, we really wanted to keep closed loop uh, shift strategies on this car just to keep everything smooth and hopefully keep everything alive. This car has got to do, you know, it's, it's got to run 16 hours basically nonstop. Um, so reliability, you know, is, is, is key here. So. Um, let's show you around on the on the, the gearbox a bit. Got the air pump. 
air compressor is a uh, it's a pretty beefy air compressor uh, it takes almost 20 amps sustained um, so that will then charge this to about one I think I have it set to about 165 psi and it's all controlled from the PDM so the PDM knows the pressure thus it will can then control the compressor when to turn that on or off so I think I have it turning on at 150 psi shutting off at 160 um, and yeah, it does a good job. Usually the air compressor doesn't have to kick on until there's like two or three shifts and then it needs to recharge that. So it'll probably be running, I'd say 50% of the time while on track. These are the paddles. These are nothing more than simple micro switches, uh, probably similar to your sim racing pedals or paddles. Go through and start it up. gear or reverse gear you have to hold the paddles down for I think 300 milliseconds it's just kind of an extra safety measure so you don't like accidentally bump it while you know getting in the car or something or whatever or moving the steering wheel it won't just go into gear and then you know take off on you so clutch in first gear so then I go back to neutral This is Haltech and this is, uh, it's got the transmission control stuff. As you can see, we got everything closed loop. If uh, for some reason something, something's not working, it's got a max shift time. So it'll kind of just expire. And it'll also block out gear, um, a shift request for 500 milliseconds. Um, it does also a throttle blip uh, for you on the downshift and it does a rev matching. So it doesn't like, uh, it shouldn't quite over rev the engine. Uh, it, it'll know the next RPM for each shift. It knows that because it knows the gear ratio. So these have got the gear ratio in and it also knows the wheel speed um, of the car, the, the drive speed. So with that, it can kind of do its own calculation and figure out what's the next RPM if I were to downshift from fourth to third, what's, what's the RPM in third? And then it's got to exceed, um, it's got to meet its, it'll meet that RPM and set basically a moving rev limit um, so helps make downshift nice and smooth here we got our sh our paddles so this is the paddle shift you can do the shift stack right now i got that turned off you've got the transmission um, control stuff so block downshift if over rev you can set up a lot of other um, safeties and stuff too these shift inhibits uh, and you get to set up like your own tables holtec really does a nice job here giving you giving you control Gear detection is my barrel sensor, so it knows when it's in first, second, third, fourth. So that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, Haltech makes this nice and easy. We have, um, this is an 06 S2000. Actually, I think it's an 08, but it's 06 and up uses a, a different ABS module. We're actually feeding it all of the CAN info from the ABS system. So we worked with Haltech a bit. Um, they really helped us out. We did a, some CAN sniffing on it on ABS to see, to, to basically get all the wheel speeds, the steering angle, the, the brake pressure. So we're, um, we're kind of lucky here. Yeah, I think that's about it. So yeah, um, this transmission, it, um, it actually works super well in an S2. It fits inside the tunnel well. Uh, they make a output shaft uh, that fits right on the factory S2000 uh, drive shaft. Um, uh, we all run K-Series and we have to run adapter plates and adapter flywheels and stuff because uh, we still have ran the S2000 transmission in the past. This transmission has a K-Series bell housing, so no adapters needed, bolts right up. We get to use a factory uh, or a factory style. Basically, we get to use any K-Series clutch setup. Um, which gives us a lot more options. When running a sequential transmission, you, you want a really light uh, clutch and flywheel setup because the downshifts have to happen very quickly. Um, so if it's a heavy flywheel and stuff, it, it takes a while for the revs to come up or, or gear changes or you basically, it, it takes a while for the RPMs to change. And in the sequential, you need it to happen now. Um, so that's why we're running a really lightweight clutch and don't need it to hold a lot of power. In fact, we're using a seven and a half, seven and a quarter inch Tilton uh, clutch setup, and it's a single disc, so it's a really small little clutch, single disc, and I, I'm not sure what it's really rated for. I think maybe it's like 260 torque or something, uh, and we're running yeah 190 torque at best in this car. So, yeah, uh, so 
uh, we'll get this car on the dyno. We're gonna go through and you know try to tune as much as we can on the dyno with the shifts. Uh, make sure all of our closed loop stuff's working. Um, make just make sure we have full proper control of everything. To properly tune gear shifts, it has to be kind of done on track. You know, the dyno is not the same exact inertia that this car is going to see. You know, traveling down, you know, turn five at Road America down the hill. You know, with with full you know threshold braking. So a lot of the a lot of the tuning with with a gearbox has to kind of be done on the track. So that's kind of the the next step after the dyno would be just you know getting to a track and start um, start turning some laps and playing with it a bit. So. All right, uh, it's time to go home. It is Friday, I think it's seven, six o'clock. Thanks for watching, guys.